Are you great at drawing 2D things but not so good at 3D modelling them for your 3D games? Well look no further because I am not great at 3D modelling and that's that's a fact. That's not even just, uh, that's, that's not, that's not new. Like people know I'm not great at 3D modelling. Um, I always struggle 3D modelling. I'm okay at drawing and I'm pretty good at like doing 2D graphics and pixel art. But I cannot draw 3D images to save or draw 3D or create 3D models to save my life. Now, this software, which I've been allowed access to, um, is absolutely amazing. Now, you can come to this website now. It's called kdim3d.com. I'll put the link down below. Um, and you can generate 2D images to 3D super easy. And this is absolutely amazing. It uses AI to convert 2D images to 3D. Now, let me go to the actual tool here. You can see this is the actual create zone. If we go to assets as well, you can see all these different things in here which have been done, TV console, chairs, crystals, shoes, which is pretty awesome. So let's go to create. Now, we have a, a bit of geometry settings here and a few other things as well. You can see we can choose the size, fit and height, uh, the detail in terms of the um, high detail. So if you turn this on, it will try and get more detail from the image and it also ups the poly count up here for you. You can modify this. If you need some low poly stuff, you can lower this poly count a little here um, to get some probably less detailed stuff out. But obviously do bear in mind it will come out obviously uh, lower quality, although it will be quicker to render. Now, I drew up a lovely image earlier today. As you can see, it's this ghost character. If you guys have seen my 3D or sorry, my VR game I'm currently making with ghosts involved, um, you'll know that I'm working on this. And I, my 3D model, it's, it's pretty boring. It's pretty basic. I 3D modeled a new one recently and it's not that great. So I decided to drop this guy into this software. And I'm going to show you how in a second um, and basically generate a new ghost. And it came out absolutely amazing. So let me show you. So we've just got this simple character. I've done two different views for it. So it has two different... Um, views to take reference from. Now you can just do the one and it will guess the rest of it. Um, but if you add more, you'll get obviously the detail you sort of want. I wanted to make sure the horns were kind of coming out forward as well as out to the side. Um, so by doing both of this, you can now see the difference there and the AI will be able to kind of come up with the idea. Now what you need to do is we need to drag in our reference image here um, and we can set up the settings. Now I selected high detail for this and I went for about 150 on the height um, and then I clicked remove background because this image needs to be on like a plain white background if possible or monochromatic, I think it says, um, for it to come out as best as possible. And as you can see, this is what I did. So you hit generate and it will start processing. Now, when you're using the high detail mode, it will take, it normally takes between 15 minutes and an hour, which I've noticed so far. Um, but this one came out in about 20 minutes. Um, and if you turn high detail off, it normally comes out in about 15 minutes. One of them come out in five minutes, which was really quick. Um, and obviously this is all processed through an AI neural network, most likely, um, which was very, very awesome. So if we go to home, you can see I generated two different things myself. Now we did this ghost and this key. Now I found this key on the internet. I just wanted to see what it would do. Um, and this came out pretty awesome as well. But let's start off with the ghost. So as I pull it in, you get this. And you can see it's got 30,000 poly, poly count there. Um, and this was just, it says here, the first iteration. There's no texture on it. It's a height 150. These are all the settings I set. And you can see the character right here. We can click this little icon here to full screen it and actually have a look at this asset. Now, look how good this came out. Let's just get the reference image back up. That's what I drew. This is what it created. Look how good the detail is. It knew it was a tongue. Look, it even added the detail in the tongue. If you can kind of see that from different angles, the eyes are all there. Um, it kind of added frames around my eyes, which I didn't really think of adding, but I think it looks absolutely amazing. Now it is there. It kind of gives me that Pokemon character vibe as well. Um, and we can use this tool to actually have a look. You can see we've got the, we can actually have a look at the sizing here by doing this. Um, we can, this just tells you how to rotate the camera. This is the coloring section. So you can see here we've got, oh, I've just clicked them instantly. So you can select the different parts of the uh, 3D model that it rendered. You can see it actually created separate elements for it, which is pretty awesome. So let's leave those as black. Oh, leave those as black. Click the body. Let's make it more of a white. Click the eyes. I'm going to make those like a, you know, let's go for quite a bright red. We're going to leave the frames at that color. And then the tongue, we're going to do a bit lighter red. And I forgot to hit save. My bad. And then we hit save. And this will also, can we select now? We'll just leave it as this. Um, we can actually just hit 
save, and this will obviously save the material to our element. And there you go, that's the actual model now with colour on it. You can see we gave him black horns, the eyes and all that on there. Obviously, you can take this into any software, add textures to it. You can un-UV wrap it or whatnot. And talking about un-UV wrapping, let's have a look at the actual polygon counter. You can see if I click this one here, we can actually see how it's made, the, the quads which are used to make this here. And you can see it's actually really... It's really symmetrical. I thought this was going to come out of lines all over the place and not very well done, but holy crap is this good. You can see the actual full-on detail. Now, AI is incredible, but this is this is next level to what I've seen so far. Um, you can see the sort of back, the back fit, how symmetrical it all is as well. It's top tier. Now, AI is incredible, but just adding AI to this is great. Now, I know a lot of people are worried about AI and how it can affect people's jobs and their careers. I don't think people should be scared of AI. I think people should embrace AI and use it. If you're a 3D modeler and you're good at 3D modeling, imagine how quick you could quickly whip up one of those 2D things. You take a 2D image, you f you get it all generated, then you take this and then you tweak it yourself. People, I'm not going to be able to modify this very well. Like, personally, I would want to go in here and actually, like, fill in the inside and make it so, you know, try and optimize it as best I can for video games. I don't know if this software could do it. It does have a iteration tool, so you can actually iterate on top of this, which I'll show you later on. Um, but... It's not could probably be as good as or as refined as a 3D artist, but this still speeds up the process. It could incredibly. And for us indie devs who, you know, we were trying to have 101 skills. Well, AI is just here to help us achieve those different skills. If you've got a really good game idea, but you're not good at 3D modeling, then obviously this tool is for you. Like it can make your dreams come true without having to hire um, a 3D team if you haven't got the budget for it. So let's actually just turn off this back to this view. And one other thing you can do is you can actually describe what you would like to change. You could say, make the horns bigger and stuff like that, I assume. Hit confirm and it will obviously process a new iteration for you as well. You can also export this in a bunch of different formats. I normally use FBX because why I use in Unity or OBJ. Um, but yeah, you can obviously export this. I've already exported it and we can bring it into, we'll open it up in Blender in a minute so you can actually have a look at it in Blender. Let's close this one and let's have a look at the other one I 3D render too. So you can see the image I uploaded is here, just a key, and this is what it's actually given me back. Now, I do notice there is an issue with the teeth and it looks like it's a positional issue. So we might be able to fix this in Blender ourselves. But you can see, look at this. This was actually a low detail render, this one. And I still think it's come out with incredible detail as this. You can see it looks really nice, the 3D model. If we click on this, what are we getting? There you go. You can see the different levels of detail, which look really good. But here you go. So this is the element here. Let's have a look what we've got. So we've got the jaw, the top part of the jaw, the back there, and the teeth. So let's have a look at the mesh here. Ah, one issue I'm noticing is, let's open it in tab mode. These teeth are actually a part of one. So it's actually a part of one element here. So I won't be able to just take this and I thought I was just going to be able to move that teeth across and we would have fixed the issue, but apparently not because it's one. Cool. So let's see what we can do by, to fix this in the actual tool then. Let's go here. Let's see what happens when we type teeth. What would we type? So I'm just going to put in here, the teeth need to be aligned to the mouth. I hope this is enough detail. If I hit confirm, uh, your iteration is processing. You can see the pre-version pre of your 3D model by using the left arrow. So we can go back here to see obviously that one. Now let's hope to see this end up with a better thing. So we'll come back when this is done. All right, guys. So I've just got a notification on Discord. And let me just show you this quickly. Um, bam, I just got a notification on Discord saying your asset has been completed. This is how it actually lets you know, by the way, you can actually input your Discord and there you have a bot that will tell you when the render is actually complete, um, which is pretty awesome. So let's just minimize that, go back here and let's just go to key and, oh, I might need to refresh the page because I've just left this page open. Let's go to key and see the new iteration. Oh my God, it's actually done it. <laughs> 
you can actually see the teeth have been put back into place. That's incredible. It fixed it and it's kept everything else the same and it's fixed what I've asked it to do. I didn't expect that. I thought we may have to like try and figure out some sp some specific wording, but nope, it's, it's AI. It's smart enough to know what it's doing. Now look at this. I might actually use, I'm not allowed to because I'm pretty sure this asset is, the image I used to generate this is like Adobe property, but shh, we won't tell anyone. This key is amazing. I may have to create my own. I may have to draw my own as well, so I'm not getting copyrighted or anything or something like that. Some Something will happen, but wow, incredible. Look at this model. Now that is incredible. Let's actually download this key now. And actually, let's open it up in Blender. Can I drag this just straight into Blender? Is that a thing? Huh? No, I, I don't know why I thought that would just work like that. Let's delete the old mesh and let's oh, cancel. Let's import our new mesh. Import a FBX key number one. And there we go. We've got our new key here. Let's have, actually have a look. I kind of want. I'm curious about the head. If we open this up in edit mode, look at that. It's just so uniform as well. Like my my own. My own 3D models are not this uniform. I am disappointed in myself. But you can see the symmetry here. It's really well done. I think overall this is incredible. Now, I can take these FBX files, drop them into Unity and just use them. I can also, if I went, if I want to drop in the, let's actually drop in the ghost here while we're here. Delete think on here. File, import, FBX. And let's just go ghost one, import. And here we are, we have our ghost. Does this still have the textures on it that I added? If we go new, no, I don't think it does. I think this is actually the gray one I explored. But look, you've got the rings, the actual eyes. And if we just click the body and tab here, you can see how uniform it actually is. Again, it's so well done. This AI is incredible. I am, I didn't think this was going to come out as well as it did. Like the AI is amazing here. And I am very happy with how it's turned out. This is incredible. Look at those horns. Oh, those horns are just well detailed. Don't know. I don't know how to move in. You can tell I don't use Blender because I don't even know how to navigate around this environment properly. Look at me. <laughs> well, there we go. That's it. So, like, just compared to the image, like, look. Let's just shrink this down. Like, compared to the image, this thing is on a different level like it knew what i wanted and it made it better and that's that's where it that's where ai excels it knew what i would i'm not the best artist in the world and it just made it better this is incredible ai is amazing and we should use it more and i know there's some people against that but this for stuff like this where it can really help indie developers out so i don't have to go out and pay for a 3d model artist to come and create all this and i know that means a 3d artist doesn't get his pay but i physically couldn't afford to pay for all the assets i'd need for what i pay for this software instead like it would cost me way much more and i couldn't afford it so it's not that as a if i had more money maybe i would go to a 3d artist but using the ai software is just incredible like you can see it's it's new exactly what i'm wired and it's done it and that's why this, that's why I'm really pleased. <laughs> okay, guys, so I just set up a little scene for our guy here. And as you can see, rendered in him what he actually would look like in the game. So once we actually add all the sort of lighting, bloom and all that to our character in the game, you can see the sort of effects we can get from 3D. This started off, literally, all I did was got a 2D image. I drew a 2D picture and I threw this in software. And I, I could probably do this in... 10 i could probably draw a picture in five minutes throw it in the software wait about 15 to 20 depending on how high resolution you want it and then just export it and there we go we're already at this stage within another 10 10 10 20 minutes in under an hour basically you can have a fully rigged system like this all ready to import into your game rather than taking solid multiple hours multiple days for some things like and you should see some of the stuff other people have done for this as well. It's incredible. Man, I am jealous. But look, this is just a final render. I just want to show you that this Kadem stuff is... Ignore this. Uh, we'll pretend I knew what I was doing in Blender. I definitely wasn't searching how to how to use it. Um, and yeah, I just want to say Kadem system is awesome. I'm going to be using this a lot more in the future. I'm going to try actually using them in a game in the future. So if you want to see... 
more 3D game dev stuff, content, especially AI related, let me know down below and I will do it. I will even try and use ChatGPT to even make some of the scripts as well. Can we make a fully made game from AI? Most likely, yes. <laughs> Probably, pretty easily, which would be pretty awesome. But guys, uh, this tool is awesome, kdim3d.com, check it out, it's incredible, this software is great, I'm going to be using this in the future, loads and loads, so guys, don't forget to subscribe, like the video, and leave a comment on what you think of this down below, and I will see you in the next video. For now, peace out.